Good morning guys, it is Saturday, November 11th. I am just making my pre-workout meal right now, I'm waiting for one more slice of toast to be toasted. But for pre-workout, I always, always have a good amount of carbs. If you can, that's better to eat your carbs around your workout. So I have a nice carb, I have three slices of sesame Ezekiel bread. The sesame Ezekiel bread is like one or two less carbs. I think it's the least carby out of all of the Ezekiel bread, so that's why I go for it, so I can have a little bit more carbs. <laughs> and I always have low fat. I try to aim for under nine grams of fat for my pre-workout meal and my post-workout meal. Fat is a slower digesting macronutrient, so it tends to make you a little bit bloated or like feeling weighed down and heavy for your workout. So that's why I recommend lower fat and higher carb. Butter spray on your Ezekiel bread is obviously a must. Ezekiel bread is a little bit harder. Um, butter spray, then I cannot have bread without this now. So butter spray and then sprinkle some chili lime seasoning on top. Woo! It's really, really good. So I'm gonna eat this pre-workout meal. I have a really busy day today, actually. I have to get my hair done. I'm gonna try to get my nails done because I lost one. And the nail salon is right next to the hair salon. So I just got a lot going on this Saturday. So I'm just gonna take you through a full day of eating. I have some treats I'm gonna try later. And then I'm also gonna make scallops tonight for dinner. And I would love to show you guys how I do that. So I'm gonna eat this, head on over to the gym. I got a two-week free trial membership for Lifetime Gym, Lifetime Fitness. It's like this spa gym. I cannot wait to show you guys. I'm so excited. We're going to have um, our post-workout meal there too. It's another upper body day, so Saturdays on the weekends is just an upper body day, which I just showed you an upper body day, but we're going to have like a faster workout. It's not going to be as long, not going to be as intense, so I'm just going to take you along for my whole entire day today. So. I'm gonna eat, I'll see you guys soon, bye. All right, we are almost at the gym. Ooh, my shoulders look good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take two scoops of one of our Vortex. We're almost here. All right, two scoops. Carnitine, I like to take this before my workout. L-carnitine burns your fat for fuel. Cheers. That's a quick way to get it in. <laughs> and now I'm gonna make my shaker, what I will sip on like right now. And in the beginning of my workout, I have Amino Strong. So this is all your BCAs. Creatine, three grams of creatine, and then pump enhancers for your muscles. One big old scoop of that in my shaker. And I already have, this morning I put the best aminos in my gallon. Cause yesterday I had a hair appointment today and I'm like doing stuff today that I know I won't be able to drink as much water probably. So I started off strong in the morning with my snow cone BCAs in my water because it makes me drink my water so fast. So we are gonna go, the gym is right in the next parking lot. We're gonna go probably get a nice little tour of this spa gym. Pretend like we're rich for two weeks. All the Boca, it's in Boca Raton, Florida, so it's gonna be fucking housewives of Boca Raton up in here. And then you'll have me slamming the weights down and fucking swearing and shit, so. I'll see you guys in there for Upper Body Day, bye. All right, upper body day. Upper body day for me always means back and shoulders. I don't train my chest because I have implants, so I always start with back because it is the biggest muscle. Right here I am warming up. I always do about two to three warm up sets before I get into my heavy weight. And if you can see here before every single set, I take one huge big gulp of air. Fill your lungs with air. That really helps you be able to pull the weight and I'm bending over, keeping a soft knee, and I'm pulling back with my elbows, and I'm pulling the bar to my waistline. We're doing four sets of five heavy barbell bent over row. Right after those five sets of 
or those four sets, I'm sorry, of my heavy bent over row, I go into my compound shoulder movement, which is standing barbell military press. This is my warm up set. I'm just doing a set of 10 with just the bar. And then this is my second warm up set. I just do a few reps here because I don't want to get too fatigued. Your shoulders are a tiny, tiny muscle and they get tired fast. And I actually haven't done standing military press in quite some time because I haven't had a spotter to help me. And sometimes when it gets a little heavy, I like someone behind me just to make sure that I am stable. So this set was one that I thought was going to be my heavy set, my heavy weight for the day, two 10 pound plates on each side, but it went up so easy. I was so stoked. I usually need Brian to like help me a little bit and I didn't. So I put weight on the bar. I have a 10 and a two and a half on each side here and I'm staying with this weight and I'm doing a total of four sets with five reps of this weight. And Brian's just like standing behind me, kind of guiding my shoulders or my elbows, but not really helping. I'm really, really pushing and working. It felt so good. Now we're going into a main back movement. So this workout, you're just alternating back shoulders, back shoulders, back shoulders. I cho chose a main back movement and I superset it with an accessory shoulder movement. So here we did four sets of 10 reverse grip pull downs and four sets of 12 lateral raises for this first set. And then immediately after we go into a main shoulder movement. All of the chairs were taken so I was unable to do heavy dumbbell shoulder press so I just did machine shoulder press four sets of eight to ten. This is just one of my warm-up sets. I think I added a 10 on each side to this, so I did a total of 35 pounds on each side, and I superset that with cable rope lat pullovers. Really use, I think a rope here is best because you can kind of keep a soft elbow, and you want to just pull back with your elbows. You don't want you, your triceps to hurt. If your triceps are getting sore, lighten the weight. So I did four sets of 12 with the cable lat pullovers, and then I go into my next main back movement, which is seated cable close grip row. I have my Versa grips on here just because I am going heavy and I really want to be pulling with my back and I don't want my like grip strength, my biceps to take over the movement. So I'm just pulling it to like my belly button. We did four sets of eight to 10 reps of the rows. And then for the accessory shoulder movement, we did four sets of 12 dumbbell upright row. I love upright row for back, shoulders, rear delts. It's such a good movement. I do it every week. And then this is the very last exercise of the day. This was a main shoulder movement. So we started with shoulders here and it's single arm landmine shoulder press. I remember two and a half years ago when I was working at Gold's Gym as a personal trainer, I remember vividly doing this move and I could barely get 10 reps with just the 45 pound bar with no weight on it at all. And I haven't done it since I've tried it two and a half years ago. And I was so pumped that I could like successfully put a 10 pound plate on there. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It was hard. This workout on my heavy day, I really like to like push myself and challenge myself. So we did four sets of eight to 10 reps for the single arm a landmine shoulder press and then we supersetted that with single arm landmine row. I love landmine row. I really prefer the single arm over everything because you can really like manipulate where you pull the weight, where you stand, where you move the bar. Like I angle it so the weight is like just on my lats. It's perfect. But my camera died so this was the last thing we did so it was kind of perfect actually. Awesome workout. Give it a try. Hey guys, so my camera died during my last set of my exercise, but I think Brian was able to get a couple reps, so I think you're good, but the workout ended there. We went to this place called Local Greens, and I just estimated my macros, and I'm not gonna care. I overestimated. I will put a picture right here of what I got. It was like a pretty much like a ahi tuna poke bowl. I estimated 30 grams of protein, 
80 carbs because there was 12 ounces of brown rice. I did ask that question and then there was also mango and a bunch of other veggies, edamame I think. So it was a carby bowl, it was big. So I estimated 80 carbs and I estimated 33 fat even though I think it was probably lower in fat. Restaurant meals and things, they just are always going to be higher than you expect in fat. So I just would rather overdo it. And so that was a pretty, I think the calories were around like 730. And that was just an estimate, but I'm going to go with it. I'm at the hair salon right now. I got to run in, but I wanted to show you guys, since this is going to be a full day of eating, this real food bar. It's Rich Piana's 5% Nutrition, his real food protein bars. It, there is 20 grams of protein, all from egg whites, 26 carbs, and they come from sweet potato and yams and oats, and then 10 grams of fat, which comes from coconut oil and pecan. So it's all real food. This is a meal replacement bar, and there is 10 grams of fiber, only five sugars, but the sugar is all natural. Um, it's better in the microwave if you do get these. I ordered this online, a whole box of them sweet potato pie flavor is really good so I'm gonna run and get my hair done I will see you in a few hours I am making a low carb um, stir fry with scallops which I'm gonna show you everything and then I'm gonna have some red wine my favorite red wine and a whole pint of ice cream so I will catch you guys later bye hey guys back from the hair salon got my wine here one the one arm man This is not my favorite wine. It's my second favorite. My favorite wine is called The Prisoner and it's a red blend, I believe, either a Zinfandel or a red blend. I think it's a red blend. It's a little bit dry. It's my favorite wine in the whole world. I am going to, I logged 30 carbs for this wine, but realistically, I'm probably gonna have a little bit more and I don't really care. Then I wanted to take you guys upstairs to see my new office. Kelly, keep calm and believe in yourself. I have to hang it. I got this from Target. It's a, you know, what is that word? Chalkboard? And then a little cork board on the other side. But I just had to buy chalk. It didn't come with chalk. Like, who the hell does that? And then I got these cute little succulents at Trader Joe's. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, my current read. How to be happy, damn it. Also a really awesome read, really short text. And then how fucking cool is this? An hourglass that finishes in like 10 minutes, so it's such a liar. And I have little things to hang. This keeps falling off, but it's my cute little desk. It's adorable. I'm gonna get some work done, sip on my favorite wine, and I will catch you guys for dinner. All right guys, so I'm getting my scallops ready for dinner. I'm gonna do this super quick because I'm gonna do like a cooking show series type of um, video on how to make scallops, but I'm just simply seasoning, seasoning them with salt and pepper on each side, that's all. And I'm gonna make a stir fry with steamed broccoli and edamame. So it's a really low fat, low carb meal because I'm using Trader Joe's rice cauliflower as the rice component. I'll do a little cooking spray just so they don't stick. But I'm gonna use coconut oil so it gets like a nice brown, golden brown crust. So we are just gonna add our scallops and they are gonna cook for two minutes on each side. You don't wanna overcrowd them and just move the oil so the scallops get that golden brown crust and don't touch them. When you make scallops, you don't want to touch them. They will, when they're ready to be flipped, they will kind of release themselves from the pan. I know that sounds weird, but if you try to peel them from the pan, they're not ready to flip yet. So don't touch them, just let it sit. And I'm just moving the oil around to make sure that it gets on each scallop. So it's time to flip. I'm just going to carefully move it around and they are ready. It came up with no hesitation, no pull. You can feel it when they're like stuck to the pan. And you can kind of tell when they're done because the middle won't be translucent. Like 
you don't want to overcook scallops. That's like the worst fucking thing on earth that you can do. So I'm going to watch these because they could be done before the two minute mark. Because the there's like a really tiny little baby one right there. So I'm just going to watch them and just look at the middle and make sure that it's not translucent anymore. And you want it to just be like very clean white. And when you take them off of the heat, they will continue to cook a little bit because you're not going to just start eating them immediately. You really should let them rest for about five minutes because they will come to temperature in the middle. So it's better to take them off when they're a little tiny bit translucent in the middle because it really will keep cooking. And that's why when you go to a really nice restaurant, they will ask you what temperature you want your scallops cooked because you really can eat them like medium rare if you wanted to. And I am gonna turn down the heat to a medium. In this same pan, I'm just gonna spray it a little bit with cooking spray. I'm going to add my rice cauliflower and just let that cook for like two minutes. And that's it. Rice cauliflower, you don't want to cook, you don't wanna overcook it. Adding the edamame to the water too. But you don't wanna overcook the cauliflower because then it becomes like mashed cauliflower. It's freaking disgusting. We are just gonna play around a little bit. I'm gonna add some chili lime, because why not? And some onion salt, which is delicious. I'll probably add a little garlic to it, garlic powder. <laughs> I thought I had soy sauce and I don't talk. So, ooh, just found this. We got chili garlic sauce. It's hot and spicy and garlicky. I like it spicy, so. I'm gonna throw my steamed broccoli in. I have uh, three ounces here. They're kind of big, so I'm just gonna break it up before I put it in. Okay, I'm just gonna add a little bit of ponzu. Brian found this. I'm just gonna add a little tiny bit. There's like two carbs, he said, but tonight I'm just kind of being like whatever. The edamame is just gonna boil for a couple more minutes. The heat is off of this. I'm just gonna leave this in the pan so when my edamame is done, I'm just having one serving, which is a half a cup. I'll add the edamame to the stir fry. I'll add the stir fry in my bowl and then top it with four scallops. So I will show you the finished product when everything is done. This is a big ass bowl of stir fry right here. Look at that, heaping. That whole bowl is 335 calories, 25 carbs, 41 protein, eight fat, 13 fiber. Yeah, so make that. I'm gonna do a cooking series on this recipe, maybe with shrimp or something instead, but um, when I'm dieting and my carbs get low, 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 cauliflower rice, either stir fry Asian or Mexican chipotle bowls, but I'm gonna devour this. And then I will see you again when I have my pint of skinny cow and I will tell you how it is, so bye-bye. So we're watching How to Get Away with Murder. That's what we're like into right now, the third season. But I have a whole pint of Skinny Cow Fudge-tastic Java. I love, what's that flavor I love? Mocha. So I think this will be really good. It's only 350 calories per pint. It is only eight grams of fat for the whole thing. That's insane. Eight grams of fat. 46 carbs and 23 protein for the whole pint. <gasps> Ooh, once you get past that top layer, which is always the worst, the top layer. <gasps> oh my God. Oh my God, Brian. Holy crap. That's a swirl. Okay, here we go. Trying it. Okay, let's go. Oh my god. Say something. This tastes like real ice cream. Real, real, real ice cream. Like briars. I'm gonna get back to watching How to Get Away with Murder. I still have my little glass of wine. This is it for the night. I feel good. I haven't been snacky. When I first had a sip, my first sip of wine, I immediately told Brian, I was like, I want to go to Sweetwater now. I want to go out to eat, but I didn't. And I'm so happy. I'm like, I'm not hungry. I'm enjoying this a lot. So balance and learn. I'm still learning. So I'm going to get back to my show. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.